So we're going to look at uh, part 5B, if you will, of I Am the Good Shepherd. And kind of our focus is Psalms 23, uh, verse 2, but we're also going to look at John 10:10, 10, 10, where it says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And Psalms 23, 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Isn't that good? So we're going to kind of look at that this morning um, and uh, take a few minutes to uh, examine the scripture, let it apply to our life, and I'm still just enjoying the worship, quite frankly. I mean, it's still ringing in my spirit. I mean, it just, it just feeling really, really, really good. You guys are a bunch of good singers, too. Whoa, you ought to cut an album or something, I don't know. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time of worship, this time of praise, this time of coming together as family and friends. We just thank you, Lord, that you love us so much that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for each one of us, to shed his blood that we could be free from sin and that we could be guaranteed of eternal life. We thank you for that, Father, for your love and your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your word. And Holy Spirit, I ask you to come, be our teacher, be our guide, and illuminate the scriptures today. May they penetrate our very spirit and soul. So for all these things, Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. And today's the day that you've made. And I'll tell you, all we want to do is rejoice and be glad in it. Just rejoice and be glad in it and be thankful for this day, for this time. And I ask your blessing on each one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Roman numeral number one, if you just pop out your outline, it's kind of the first verse. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And uh, for some of us, we're kind of living in a fast-paced world, if you will. I mean, the days seem to go by faster. Um, there's a lot of things going on, and in that fast society, there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of tension, and... Um, and I talk to more people that just say they're tired. I mean, I'm talking young people, not old, not over 40, not over 50, 60, whatever. I mean, I, I, I communicate because I have a, uh, an opportunity to go down to Columbia Athletic Club, and a lot of young people are there. And inevitably, I'll say, hey, how you doing? You know, man, I don't know. I'm just really tired. Well, wait a minute. You're 24. <laughs> Give me a break, would you, buddy? I'm, I'm serious, though. Uh, the pace or what's going on, even young individuals feel tired and tension and stressed, let alone those of us who are really going through other things in life. And I thought, you know, our minds get tired, our bodies get tired. Um, you know, it's sad too, sometimes even our hearts, they kind of get heavy and they get tired. Yes, they get kind of heavy and nerves and everything about us sometimes. We just kind of feel exhausted, and um, yet our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, he comes to give us safety, comfort, peace, and rest. This rest is very important. This rest is very, very, very important. And that's, what he, that's when he kind of feeds us, when he gets us into this place where we can be at rest. Um, I was just thinking, the, I went over my calendar. You, I used to see my calendar. If you want to, you can come up and take photos of it. In May, in May, how many of you have grandkids? Okay. In May, I have 23 games. 23. I have them highlighted, and all you see is highlights through the, nothing else. I mean, if it's not Little League Baseball, it's Coach Pitch. This afternoon at 3.30, I get the blessing of going and watching flag football. Amen. That's if I can stay warm enough to move. <laughs> but I'm just thinking about this, and I think about Joe and Christy, my, my kids. You know, Joe coaches them. And I thought, whoa, what a calendar. I'm tired already, and I haven't gone anywhere. What's that? Aren't you glad there's only two of them? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm grateful and thankful. But it's kind of interesting, in the midst of all that, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He makes me do that. 
And for sheep, and we're going to talk about sheep, sheep require four separate elements before they can actually lay down and be at rest and be at peace. And interestingly enough, the same thing goes with you and I. There are four things that it takes for you and I to be at perfect peace and, if you will, even at perfect rest. And so we're going to look at that Roman numeral number two. The first thing we've got to look at, you and I have to be free from fear. We have to be free from fear. Sheep are kind of interesting. A flock of sheep, if a, uh, like a, uh, say a, a stray jackrabbit jumps up, uh, the herd scatters. I mean, it just scares them to death and they just scatter. And so something instant that happens can just scatter the sheep, something that just kind of happens in our life. And so Jesus says, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you and I'm going to make you lie down, and then I'm going to bring you beside some still waters. So I'm going to make you lie down. I'm going to make you rest. And when we do that, I thought to myself, man, oh, man, oh, man, what creates fear? Don't have to answer that. But in, individually, in each one of our lives, different things can create fear. That some things may bother you, and they don't create any fear within me at all. But they might within you. And I thought sometimes, you know, distress. When there's a distressful situation or a disaster happens or uh, something like that, um, it creates fear. What about a panic attack? That creates fear, doesn't it? And people have panic attacks all the time. And it creates fear. And so there's all these different things. And what I also thought about, there's also fear of the unknown. Yeah, I put it like this. A lot of people have this fear, the what ifs, the what ifs. I'll give you a real stupid one on my part. I'll be having a wonderful quiet time. It's Tuesday. I'm going to go fish. going to pull my boat out of the garage. And the first thing I think about, I wonder if anybody's blocking my driveway. I'm, I'm out of nowhere. So I run to the front door and I look out. Is the road clear? But I mean, it's kind of stupid, but small little, what I'm trying to say is small little tiny things, the what ifs, the small things. And what they can do is they can create fear and anxiety and tension in our life. And so I put that down, the what ifs. And some people call fear, you might want to write this down, stress in action. Fear is what? Stress in action. It creates all these kinds of things. John 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have what? Peace. You may have peace. In this world, we're going to have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And the most important thing for you and I to con well, consistently, never-endingly remember, Jesus Christ is our good shepherd. Yeah. He's there all the time, through the what ifs, the tension, discouragement, danger, tragedy, things that come unexpectedly in our life, he's there Amen. to give us peace. And this is so, so important, rest, Amen. rest, that we can rest in him. Second Timothy 1, 7, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or a spirit of fear, but a spirit of what? Power, love, and then self-discipline, and another scripture says a sound mind. I like the self-discipline because it's vitally important in our lives. It's important to be disciplined. It's important to say no to certain things. It's important to say that you can stand up against what something comes your way. You're disciplined in your life. You're organized in your life. But the other part I like about it, a sound mind. And why is a sound mind so important? I will tell you right now, the first place Satan comes to attack is your brain. He'll come to bring some kind of discouragement, some kind of thoughts. It's all in the mind. So we have to depend on that power, love, and a sound, sound mind. That's what we're given. I was reading a, a little article. I had it quite frankly a long time ago. Ann Landers, you remember her? I think she passed away in 2002, and um, I can't remember her real name, but she took the writer's name of Ann Landers, and then she was a, 
a consular and you would write in to her and then she would write back and she would consul you through the newspaper. And so she'd write the you know, articles. At her highlight or the high point in her career, she was averaging 10,000 letters a month. Can you imagine her mailbox? 10,000 letters a month asking for advice. Isn't that interesting? And then when they, they, they went through all these, they found that 90% of all of her mail, all of the problems people dealt with, was fear. 90%. They would write her and they, they feared something, and then she would give an answer to that. For some, they would fear that uh, their fear they'd lose their health, or their wealth, or their well-being, or a loved one, or a possession, or something like that. But fear, and fear can absolutely destroy you. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, has He? But what? Say it again: power, love, and a sound mind. With self-discipline in there. Okay, very, very important. Because God wants us to be free of fear so we can do, enter into his rest. Enter into his rest. So a sound mind is a mind that is at ease all the time, believe it or not. A mind that's at perfect, perfect peace and is not obsessed with fear. We have confidence, confidence in our good shepherd. That's what's important. Confidence in Jesus Christ, not in ourselves but in Jesus Christ to take care of us and have us to lay down where we're not, we're not in fear of anything. In Proverbs 2.8, for he guards the course of the just and protects the way of his faithful ones. Protects the way of his faithful ones. And that's so vitally important as our shepherd, he protects us along life's journey. You wake up in the morning, you have a blessed day, you ask him to bless your entire day, and every moment of that day, he's with you. I don't care what it is. He is with you all the time. And I even get now where I'm saying, Lord, bless my night. Bless my sleep. I know you're with me 24-7. I, I, I get that, but you're my shepherd. I want you to watch over me tonight, too. Amen. Watch over my dreams. Watch over my dreams. Sometimes the screwiest things can come into your brain. I want him to protect me and be my shepherd even when I'm sleeping. Right? 24-7, all the time. He's there all the time. And he protects the way of his faithful ones. Get the, write it down, 24-7. 24-7. It doesn't stop when you go to bed. He protects you all night. All through the night. Okay, you're with me on all that? Okay. Uh, Roman numeral number three, he keeps us free from friction with others in the flock. Now that's interesting. Free from friction with others in the flock. That is the entire, that's not just this church, bless you. That's the entire body of Christ. The entire body of Christ. I had a buddy of mine, uh, in fact, uh, Doug Burley uh, came to visit with me. He's been, he spoke here before. I've already arranged for him to come, I think, August 29th on Missions Day. Um, he called me up and said, hey, Bill, I'm in town. I'm free Tuesday and Wednesday at 2.30 and 3.30. Pick a day. I'll come and see you. That's all I can do. So I picked a day. So sure enough, 2.30 on Tuesday, there he is, knocks on my door, and he gives me a book. He's written a, a beautiful book. We'll kind of promote it, if you will. Jesus is my everything. Jesus is my everything. And it's interesting because he had just come back from five countries. He speaks fluent Russian. So he goes to Kazakhstan. He, I, I think Georgia. There were five countries he went to. I couldn't even keep up with it. He, he says, one of the things about Doug I love, you don't have to talk. I hope he's not listening on the, on the live streaming. <laughs> Doug sits down and boom, there he goes. He gave me the history of the five countries. And he doesn't just go and just chit chat with people. He meets with the presidents. He meets with all the leaders of these countries. 
He's invited into their homes for dinner. All of the, the big wigs, if you will, in these five countries he visits, the governors, the overseers. And what's he talk about? Jesus. That's what he talks about. He doesn't let any, anything about their own personal religion bother him. Even their own personal beliefs of Christianity bother him. He's not going to mess around with, do they believe in water baptism, full immersion, the Holy Spirit, talking in tongues? None of that matters. All that he cares about is Jesus. That's all he talks about. He's the focus. He's the center. Now think about that. In all of the Christians around this area, if that would be their focus rather than arguing about stupid things. Amen. Not kidding. I could, I could talk about a whole bunch of stuff, but I refuse to do it this morning because then you would get mad. And I don't want you to do that this morning, all right? But, but, but the point of it is, we can stay free from any friction in the body of Christ if Jesus Christ is the center. Period. End of story. So Doug talked about Jesus for two and a half hours. And I enjoyed every minute of it. You know? And he speaks to so many different people. And then he, his ministry really is uh, to bring young young Christians into ministry, young kids, but then young adults. And then he meets with, um, again, all these leaders and tries to get them to focus on Jesus Christ, even if they're not saved. They still invite him in. They want to talk to him. That is the power of the Holy Spirit working through one individual. Isn't that amazing? And I thought, this guy... You can't get him upset if you don't agree with him. I mean, politically. Uh, he has his own opinions. You have yours. Wonderful. Let's talk about Jesus. Amen. Amen. Michael wore a mask to church. I didn't wear one. He's my son. We're not going to argue. He can do whatever he wants. Are you following what I'm saying here? It keeps us free from friction and arguments and division and contention and strife that is unnecessary. That's the enemy's job is to divide us. Jesus wants to what? Unite us and keep us, keep us free. Keep us free. I mean, I, mean I, I, I guarantee you, even amongst us, we do not agree on everything. I want you to. <laughs> you know, my way is the right way, and I'll try to lead you into my thinking. But seriously, think of the diversity that we have here in this church. Diversity of opinion, diversity of different things. It's like, uh, can't we all just get along? Yep. If the good shepherd is our focus, is the center. We don't have to worry about friction. It just, it's not there. Psalms 33, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in what? Unity. Worldwide. Not just in the Seattle area. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on the Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robes. It is as the dew of Hermon was falling from Mount Zion, on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. His blessing. It just flows and flows and flows. I'll tell you this much. When there's unity, there's power. When there's unity in the body of Christ, there's power. That's why you and I are seeing signs, wonders, and miracles happening in people's lives. That's why we're seeing answered prayer. And yes, people are going through hard times. You know why? So we can pray for them. So you and I can believe for a miracle. As we walk through life's journey together, 
pray for those kind of things. That's, that's what we're believing. There's power. The Holy Spirit just flows. And I tell you, the thing about, I love about this church is everyone here has a servant's heart. All of you do. You serve in so many different ways. Some is seen, some is unseen. Some is behind the scenes. But you're servants. You pray as a servant for one another. You care for one another. You love one another. Number four, the shepherd keeps us free from flies and or parasites and flies, if you will. Sheep, especially in the summer, get annoyed, really annoyed by flies and ticks. Flies and ticks. And in fact, uh, uh, the sheep cannot lay down and be comfortable with flies buzzing around. Or if they have ticks in them, they, they, they can't get comfortable. It's kind of like this. Um, in your own little teeny tiny house or your big mansion, have you ever had flies in your bedroom at night? <laughs> and they just, they hit the window. They'll hit something. They annoy you. And so it's the same way with any sheep at all. As Christians, you know, we get flies and ticks in the form of annoyances and frustrations and uh, undesirable experiences. If you will, Christians get tired of things that do what? Bug us. <laughs> Plain and simple. These things bug us. So, But the person of the Holy Spirit comes and he does what? Comforts us. Anoints us what? The oil of the Holy Spirit. So he takes care of all of those kinds of things for you and I. But it's kind of interesting that uh, the sheep cannot relax with flies and ticks. You and I can't either. We have to have them repelled. We have to have the oil of the Holy Spirit soaking us thoroughly. So nothing can bother us. Nothing can stick to us as the Holy Spirit becomes our shield, if you will our protector. John 14, 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. Will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you in the person of the Holy Spirit. All you and I have to do is simply invite him in. Yeah. That's all we have to do. Invite the Holy Spirit to come in with power, with his anointing, with his blessing. He is our comforter. He's our helper. He's our intercessor, our advocate, strength. And the Holy Spirit stands by us. And the Holy Spirit will grant you, and you, you need to know this, he'll grant you supernatural wisdom. The Holy Spirit dwelling within you will give you supernatural wisdom in dealing with life and life's issues. Remember that. Why? Because you're never, ever, ever, ever alone. Amen. Ever. Amen. He is always, always, always with you. And I can't stress that too much. And that's why it's important to be, if you will, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit to come and just overflow you. Fill you to overflowing. And I would say not only once, but every day is a new day. I thank the Holy Spirit for being present. Come and fill me afresh. Oh, Holy Spirit, come and fill me afresh. I want to know your presence within me right this very moment. Fill me afresh. Power with authority, with your anointing. And then lastly, sheep need to be free from hunger. So do you and I. And for that, you and I need to feed on the Word of God, plain and simple. Amen. Feed on the Word of God. When you read the Word, please don't be in a hurry. Allow the Word to speak to you and to feed you. 2 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Think about that just for a minute. The Word of God 
The Word of God is going to teach you what to do. And interestingly enough, if you read the Word, sometime it may rebuke you and show you the direction you're supposed to be going and get you on the path of life again just by reading the Word and allowing the Holy Spirit to direct you. He'll correct you, and here's a great thing, train you in a sense of righteousness. Because with righteousness comes what? Peace and joy. So he'll lead you into that righteousness, then that leads you into peace and joy. Nehemiah 8.10, the joy of the Lord is what? My strength. Isn't that cool? It's pretty simple, isn't it? I kind of like this today. I don't know. So the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Boy, all you and I have to do is drink the pure milk of the word. Just yeah. soak it in, drink it in. And I close with this, 1 Peter 2, 2. As newborn babes, desire the pure milk of what? The word. That you may grow thereby. And indeed, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, filled with grace. Filled with mercy, filled with peace, filled with joy. What a wonderful shepherd, huh? What a wonderful, wonderful shepherd. Watches over us, protects us. I don't know about you, but I need him all the time. Every moment of every day. Every moment when I lay my head down on the bed and go to sleep, I need my shepherd right there. Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you are the good shepherd. You watch over us and protect us. You guide and direct us and lead us. Thank you so much for all of that. Holy Spirit, thank you for being our teacher today, being our guide, and illuminating this word. I give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.